For you. From humble beginnings in India in 1936 to a global organization with over 8,000 centers in 110 countries and 1 million students worldwide, through their tireless commitment, passionate heart, and determined spirit, 
The Brahma Kumaris arrived in America in 1974 and have since grown to 35 main centers throughout America. There are also two residential retreat centers, Peace Village, located in upstate New York, and Anabuti, located in Nevada, California. I want to just share a little bit about uh, how the centers of Raj Yoga meditation began in the United States. Actually, I was in Caribbean islands and I got invitation from New York that uh, we want to start something about meditation. And it was in 1978, I came here and we rented a very small apartment in Astoria. And from there, I found that a lot of people have interest. I realized that there is so much need and from there onwards, then centers started in many other states. Our centers are safe spaces where you can explore the power of your inner world. The classes are conducted in many, many homes, many cities all over across the United States. A lot of people, they learn meditation. They use it, that meditation, at their workplace, in their family. And also I find the children, young adults, because they are so much into like what really is the life about. The Brahma Kumaris are dedicated to personal and global transformation through the study and spiritual practice of Raj Yoga meditation. And at the heart of our teaching is the belief that the pathway to peace and happiness is to remember our original nature as spiritual beings connected to the one source. In 1981, the organization received recognition as an international non-governmental organization affiliated with the United Nations and accredited with general consultative status with the Economic and Social Council. From organizing large-scale global initiatives to local community programs, the Brahma Kumaris has a tradition of service in every field that fosters spiritual growth among individuals from all backgrounds, cultures, and walks of life. I hold on to this vision, the world of love, world of peace and harmony, world which is free from conflict and sorrow, where we can live as brothers, one family, children of common parents, one supreme divine power. This is your invitation to awaken and join us in creating a world of love, peace, and kindness. Om Shanti. It's Karen Drucker coming to you from San Francisco, California, and I am here to say that I love watching The Next Normal with Sister Jenna. I get transformed. I am inspired. It's deep. It's wise. It's wonderful, just like her. I hope you're watching it, too.
Hello everyone, Om Shanti. Happy New Year. I cannot believe we have actually survived 2020. I don't know. It was a gift in disguise and in so many ways. 2020 has taught us so much about ourselves, or at least we're hoping that it did. I mean, I know I, I know I have learned a lot. I am doing such a life review like you would not believe. And it's even unconscious. It's just things are coming up in me of, of things that I've missed, of things that I've needed to see, of just a lot of opening. So us opening up today, celebrating the ending of 2020 into 2021, and with my special guest that I have on today all the way from India, I can't tell you how my heart is singing. You all know how much I love to bridge divides, the East and the West. To know that India has started ringing in the new year with their vibrations and with their energy and that it's matching us here in the U.S. and in the West going, yes, what's going to be your vision? What's your goal? What's, what's pushing you? What's pulling you? What's, what's taking you to that next step? Geez, I just can't wait to bring on our guest, Kanyapriya, someone who I met many, many years ago in studio and we just clicked like you would not believe. You know, there's some people that you meet in life and the moment you say hi or hello, that's all you needed. You know, there's a history between the two souls and Kanapriya and I definitely have that. So listen, I want you to sit back, bring out your non-alcoholic drink, <laughs> have a wonderful time together and really let us just chit chat and, and reminisce and, and look for some deep insights as we say goodbye to 2020 and say hello to 2021. So as I allow myself to be composed, because I'm really super thrilled to be sitting and talking with my very, very dear friend from India, I wanna give you a little bit of a thumbs up of who she is. Actor, host, writer, director, entrepreneur, parenting expert and acting coach. She's got a career that spans over 30 years of the industry of entertainment, media, acting, directing, storytelling. And she has been out there in terms of narrating stories that are really important for the world to look at it with a kind of a view that can help with some sort of a transformation. But she's also into talking and spiritually enriching our lives and elevating our lives. And she's just got this effervescent energy about her that just says, welcome to my world. So it gives me a great privilege to welcome my beautiful sister all the way from India, Kanupriya. Om Shanti and Happy New Year and welcome. Well, listen, I am so I have... excited to be welcoming you onto the next normal and I could not be opening the new year at a better time and with a better person than you. Welcome. Thank you so much. And Om Shanti, uh, Sajana, it, it is amazing the way we are connecting on this platform. And in fact, uh, I've realized, you know, that these boundaries are no more important. 2020's biggest gift has been, you know, yeah, I'm just counting the gift at this moment. Is it really the way we have become global? We have become, we have understood that how the, you know, boundaries, how the, these things which were stopping us have broken down, you know, and we are connecting energetically at every moment, you know. Social media has given us, we were otherwise always talking about the boundaries, you know, that, oh my God, we can't do it. We have to come to the studios and all the technical things. Everything has just evaporated. We are connected every day, every moment now. And if we want to go into our own shed, that is also possible. Yes, 2020 has can been I, can the I... most uh, challenging year. <laughs> I know, I know. And can I tell you something? I have been in my element during the pandemic in terms of exactly what you're saying, that there are no more boundaries because I've never felt that way. I've never felt that I needed boundaries to communicate to anyone or to do anything. You know, it's like I've often felt like the world is your oyster. 
what is it that we're going to do together to create a massive story that's going to make humanity better? So the fact that we're doing it on Zoom or on Vimeo or on Skype, whatever it might be, it shows that it doesn't matter if the heart is open and then the heart is willing, you can make the impossible possible. I can't believe, Kanupriya, that during a pandemic as severe as this one, with the world on lockdown, the humanity still says, I can persevere. I can still push through this. Yeah. People haven't given up. See, this is you a know, big salute to the humanity. True, you know, like it's, I would say that there's a major resilience, the kind of perseverance we have shown and uh, the helpfulness within us. You know, we everyone wanted to be out there even if not physically, but emotionally, energetically. For the first time, we understood that energetically how we are connected. And also another thing which we understood, gentlemen, is that uh, I think in this time, that who are the people we are energetically connected and what are the things which are no more required in our life, you know? We were just hanging with them. And it, Quarantine just made us realize that it was not needed. A lot of things became redundant. You know, they were not required. We were just wow, sticking I to love them. That. We were just hanging on. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Who are the people that you were <laughs> hanging with? And then quarantine goes, you know what? I don't really need to hang with you anymore. <laughs> That's just incredible. Not only people, you know, the jobs, the lot of you know, a lot of baggage which we were carrying, you know, which we thought that, oh my God, yeah. it, it's important. They are our life. This is our life. This is how we have to live. See, look at it. Today, there is no party. And we haven't had a party like this for ages. So I always used to feel that mm -hmm. I am odd one out. But uh, my each moment, you know, each connect, today we are having this party, you know. For me, this is yeah. the most beautiful yes. party which I could have had. On a new year. <laughs> yes. I love so, it. I uh, love it. And listen, and you know I what? Really what I would love to do, of course, and I would love to catch up our wonderful audience that's watching now on the eve of New Year's in America and already New Year's in India. Everybody, Kanu, Priya, and I go back years. I think it's at least 10 years when um, I was invited yes, yeah. to join her on her very famous talk show called Awakening with the Brahma Kumaris. And in those days, Kanupriya used to interview Sister Shivani, who has become now the face of the Brahma Kumaris and the celebrity of the BK world. So they were doing their conversations back and forth for years. So Ravi Agrawal, who was the main brain behind the Awakening with Brahma Kumari show had invited me to come and share on the platform. So here I am, the American girl, the American sister, remember Kanupriya? So I flew in that day, came into the <laughs> studio, and Kanupriya and I met for the first time. Did we click or what? It just said love. It was a connect. <laughs> It was so beautiful, yes. Was. Beyond programs, the kind of connections I've had, and I would like to reiterate here on this, Jenna, if you uh, remember, uh, you became a conduit for me to reach Madhuban. Otherwise, I was... I remember. <laughs> you literally invited me, forced me, told me, this is the time you have to be there. <laughs> and I connected. So that was amazing. I can never uh, forget those moments. And they're so real, so, so um, you know, alive at this moment also. So yes, we I are could living not in believe, this energetic world, I could not believe is, um, that all those years that you were in studio interviewing Shivani, you had not once visited Madhuban. That blew my mind. It was like, what? There is no way you could have been doing this for all these years and had not gone to the motherland of blessings. But needless to say, everyone, Kanupriya yeah. went to Mount Abu, where our headquarters is located of the Brahma Kumaris, and we had a wonderful time. And you want to hear the irony about the depths and the closeness of our connection? 
I was in India this year, and Kanapri and I had not spoken mm -hmm. about if we're in India traveling or anything. And I'm just down the road or walking or something in Mount Abu, and guess who I bumped into? Kanupriya. And guess what? She had not been to the mountaintop in years either. And we happen to have been there yeah, again together. Years, so it goes to show, years. my gosh, it just goes to show how deeply linked some of us are with each other. And that's what I want us to do tonight. I want us to talk kind of prayer you and I to our wonderful audience about some of the things that we spoke about earlier today um, about the role of women in the world and and how that's moving forward in 2021 definitely you'll see a lot more of those energies and voices shining we want to talk about spirituality moving into 2021 we want to talk about our challenges and and all of that we can do in 30 minutes so <laughs> so here's how we're going to do this right Tell us a little bit about, um, you know, what your impression is at this point about the role of women in terms of how you see them showing up in 2021 and beyond. See, I'll uh, tell you what I feel uh, for a long time, you know, it's no more about just the women. It's about the feminine part, you know, and 2020 has shown us that 2021 is going to be the year of empathy, you know, empathy and nurturing, kindness. We would be needing it. Uh, we we were lacking. The whole society was lacking in empathy, in nurturing, in being that, you know, those that softer part. And uh, being a female does not mean that I have all those qualities that I have understood. You know, that the masculinity and the femininity which is there, but because being a female, we are living from heart chakra. We are always living about, you know, going about forgiveness and love, unconditional love and caring, nurturing, and we are intuitive. But I also learned, a, a, you know, a lot of things in these years when I shifted from being an anchor or a, you know, a, a media person to a filmmaker that, uh, you know, when we reach a stage of being a woman, stage of leadership, what we at times lack is that we don't embrace our own masculinity. Uh, I don't know whether I'm able to make it very clear, but this is something which I'm realizing now that, you know, we keep on looking for a, a, or either we are competing or we are uh, looking for those role models who've been unfortunately males and we keep on start working the way they have been working you know because we definitely if you reach a leadership uh, position you definitely look for a role model who has already been there and who they have been doing it and it's very unfortunate because for a female accepting and embracing her masculinity means that she can be in a leadership role uh, with her empathy, you know, with her uh, mm, nurturing part, with her, um, you know, love part, compassion part, but uh, the masculine part, the, you know, result oriented, the work oriented part and the go getter part, we at times start lacking. So embracing that masculinity within me. I feel is an important part where uh, most of the female leaders, we get confused. I'm not saying I'm a leader, but when you reach a you know, position of uh, uh, leadership in the sense that you have to take, you become the captain of the ship if you're directing, if you're filmmaking, you definitely become. And for that, Let me uh, jump you in need here. to actually, yeah. I, I want to jump in here because um... I think as women or as souls in female bodies in this incarnation, we are developing the balance of the Lakshmi Narayan consciousness, huh? like the Vishnu consciousness, yeah. where there's a beautiful balance of feminine principles and masculine principles. And I think that we might have passed through a pretty big chunk of women trying to balance their masculine and their feminine. Sometimes they come out 
a little bit too too masculine and then they've lost sight of one of the most beautiful fragrance of a woman is her femininity and if she's too feminine then she becomes like the doormat for everyone right and that we don't want have you found that because i know you're spiritual and you're on your journey of spirituality because i will speak for myself i have found that my connection to source to the divine to god to baba allah jehovah in whatever language it makes you comfortable i found that for me it brings an energy in my soul in the personality where i'm i'm really beginning to feel a deeper balance kind of priya uh, i sense that there is a feminine way about me but i've also observed that there is also a strong masculine part to me so i see the virtues of nurturing and patience but i also see the 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 quality of drive determination you know courage protection uh, i i see those energies in me and and they are balancing i can't say they're balanced but they're balancing but you've said something that has really touched me we don't have a lot of examples of that and i'm hoping that i'll be one of those in in history that you know there was just a perfect balance of the way she she carried herself as a woman but the way she also thought and acted as the masculine part of her so for me my balance came from the connection to source how does a woman develop that balance of the masculine and the feminine so she becomes a real example for i mean a full rounded woman to lead what are your thoughts and exactly you know and for that we have to come into this awareness you know what happens is i'm just talking about me as a woman you know and i'm talking about women in the power position women in the decision making position because we don't have many leaders and i'm so happy uh usa is just seeing one and uh, it it is it has been a blessing you know what we saw in the recent elections so uh, if you look at it women in power position is something which uh are which is still alien you know like even in the biz- as entrepreneurs as uh, political leaders as uh, they have been into teaching into uh, creative arts into but um, as you know those those fields which are taken as uh, masculine fields and we have a lot of uh, answers now but again the women who are there in power why they lack this uh, you know this balance is because they are just following I, we might not be i i'm not very sure whether i can say it because um, it might be that they are doing it but the balance is losing and i see it in myself see i'll tell you about my example i'm not talking about anyone else from a, a a media person when i shifted myself to become a full fledged filmmaker entrepreneur you know you've said so many things about me it wasn't an easy journey it wasn't what i had planned for myself it just happened manifested and for me to change my role from being an emi cable you know talker <laughs> which was so natural for me to become a you know a decision maker and a caretaker of and making a project seeing a project to the last so many people depended on me you know and now i'm planning to come up with it it is just happening manifesting but am i ready you know as a woman am i ready and for that that is why i think it's easier for women because they are never too sure you know we are not always very sure about it that we are the best we are right so i'm taking about my i'm talking about my example only that i am at every step checking myself you know what is it that takes me back you know which holds me and uh, i realized that there was a lot because of the society the way you know i had thought about myself even i in my own thought process was very patriarchal i realized it when i was working you know on different aspects and i realized that that patriarchy is so much there in my own mindset and i used to think that i'm very liberal so this is something which comes because of spirituality because what you said the connection with the divine you know which keeps you 
in check that if you're and it's okay to fail it's okay to learn it's okay that is why i'm saying that in this journey at every step i'm realizing that i have something to learn i have something to break yes i have something to change okay something has to shift yes i'm realizing even for myself how many examples can you name right now that you have sense has been a perfect balance or at least getting close to that sample apart from me <laughs> not many i know you <laughs> but i you the way you said jayanti bhen you know like uh, she's heading and i have met her again uh, being spiritual it becomes easier you know i i have also worked with um, i'll tell you i have also worked with this person uh, who is a chief uh, mr arvind kejriwal he is a chief minister of delhi he also goes for vipassana for 18 years you know i have seen the kind of personality he has he is a he is a leader he became an impromptu leader de, de facto leader and he had he had no experience of a political uh, you know ex, uh, history but the way he has been able to and he is second in command you know the um, deputy chief minister manish sisodia both i have seen them uh you know there again i a masculine and the feminine uh, compatibility when they are working i'm not saying they are doing everything good but there are there is a beautiful collaboration and that is why the results are happening you know work is happening but as an individual you know this combination this balance between masculinity and femininity is something we definitely have to continue to look at and maybe janab yes. it will not come from outside we'll have to check it ourselves within yes. us you know the, yes yes uh, i hear you i hear you, you it know, is definitely I, an internal yeah. process because um you I, i can just name off people like i've known or seen or met um i can go with oprah winfrey um michelle obama like you mentioned sister yeah. genty i remembered seeing daddy janky that had a beautiful strong, strong presence but then she was still a mother you could feel it and i think that you know i don't know some actors or people who are out there i might have that never met them but there is also a kind of a strength about their presence i was looking at um um a program that dipika padakon was doing on depression and suicide and i was looking at how there's a very feminine quality about her but there's also a kind of a strength or a focus about her and i said that's very interesting and then i was looking at some of the young kids who's that young girl that's the climate change gretchen you know this young lady who was out there speaking about climate change she's a young girl but she was had such a strength about her and i'm specifically choosing women because that's what i'm talking about but then i look at guys like barack obama i look at president elect joe biden men but there's a quality of a nurturing in them so i really believe what you're saying that 2021 might really be also this invitation to see the rising of the feminine and the masculine in in us all when i look at the the pick in the united states of um vice president kamala harris half indian half jamaican and then i look at joe biden uh, a good old caucasian american man in the united states of america and both of them are coming together to rise up i was like what a balance of energy you're on to something there is a rise for a balance of energy in 2021 that is definitely something that we must yeah. look into. I want to move us over to the whole narrative now of the relationship of spirituality or the role of spirituality in 2021. Astrologers, seers, mystics, psychics, I've interviewed all of them and every one of them have kept saying it's going to be the year of the awakening. it's the year of spirituality we're going to be moving into the age of aquarius things are just going to be opening up people's consciousness will be rising what do you think in terms of spirituality for 2021 and 
share with us what you've been doing to keep yourself spiritually grounded. Oh, so sweet. Thank you so much. Uh, For me, it has always been, uh, again, I said a battle, you know, within me uh, about uh, changing, uh, you know, looking for things which I can incorporate. But if you ask me uh, 2020 to 2022, when they are saying age of Aquarian, it's an age of Saturn, you know, like the Saturn is actually taking over. And if you look at the planet, I take planets as, um, you know, people, like personalities. This is how I think about them. And uh, he talks about not only, uh, you know, uh, spirituality in that the devotion and the love part or that, uh, you know, expansion of Jupiter. No, it talks about disconnecting and connecting. You know, that's what Saturn, Saturn, when how Saturn is, if you look at it, how he behaves, how this planet behaves, it cuts you off from everything you have and then allows you, if you have learned your lesson, if you have understood, if, if you have not done, if you've not been wrong, uh, you will not feel disconnected, you know. But it, it will create the circumstances, it will create the things that you will feel or it will happen, the disconnect will happen. And once the disconnect happens, so that is why it is at times painful spiritual awakening. <laughs> you know, with Jupiter, it is an expansion. It is like a guru coming in and giving you a lot of blessings and, you know, his energy. And you just are, oh my God, God has just picked me up. But with Saturn, it cuts you off. It puts, it gives you so much of, you know, pain, maybe emotional or whatever, physical. And then you remember God and then you call for him or whatever. And then the disconnect and the connect. So the, this year, 2020 has been that year of cutting off from everything, you know, taking away everything, your pride, your valuables, your money, your uh, you know your position everything where you would just put in one hole which is your home which you never wanted to be you were always running from your home but it forced you to be there to be there and you know find ways so you cried you you had you know uh, existential um, fears that what is going to happen and it took away a lot of people I mean, it has been very painful but uh that this is the time when the pain is so fierce pain is so it has disconnected us you know from everything that there is only one connect left and 2021 is going to be that connect which is a connect with myself you know which we in brahma kumaris we understood that you can connect with god only when you connect with yourself you know soul and then the supreme soul if I don't connect, leaving this, you know, understanding of this whole pe- me rather than the me here and then the Supreme Soul. So 2020, he, uh, you know, we felt that we were just confined to ourselves. It was like Vipassana. We, we've had no connects, nothing. We were not even allowed to go out. We have, our mouth has been shut. <laughs> so we we had to go in we had to find ourselves 2021 we will find him collectively collectively okay. c- collective energy you know people would be connecting to the supreme because we are ready now well, that's wonderful and it's and it's a conversation i've been having kind of prayer because um, i have the privilege of knowing a lot of individuals that are in leadership for churches or mosques or synagogues. And I know that we talk a lot about life and we talk a lot about current events and current histories, you know, current whatever. But I was asking them, why is it that I don't hear on public television or major platforms the conversation about the Supreme, about God? And even though Saturn was definitely ruling and had disconnected us from a lot of things that we thought we needed, a lot of those things we thought we needed and we had become so attached to them that when the pandemic disconnected it from us, we thought we wouldn't be able to survive, but we did, at least most of us did. And so we could, we realized that we didn't need 
all the things that we had, but maybe what we need are some, is something of a higher order, a higher purpose. And if you were to actually use the benefit of the pandemic and the benefit of 2019, it was really about turning inwards and connecting to the soul and then feeling the energy and the power to rise up to connect to the Supreme so that the real transformation can take place. I spoke to this astrologer the other day. She was fantastic, Pam Gregory. Listen out for that show on America Meditating Radio. But Pam basically said, by 2024, there will be a golden age. She says, the next few years, you're going to shine, you're going to be so bright. And she says, the more you raise your vibrations, then all the things that are crumbling, all the things that are falling apart and breaking away, if your vibrations are high, which will come from you as a soul, connecting to the Supreme, you will not be affected. And I cannot tell you how much I love that message. Sure. It was like spot on. Yeah, I think that, uh, yes, beautiful. Because this is what I'm saying. 2021, everyone is going to start searching for him. Everybody's calling him. You know, the vibrations are already coming higher. And of course, we know that he exists. You know, it's there. <laughs> Only thing was that we had to, humanity collectively had to call for it. And they would be. So the moment our vibrations, which we are talking about as 5D and 3D, we had been connected, you know, 90% of the humanity was connected to 3D. Pandemic has brought us back to a free 4D or the fear consciousness. And final 2021, 2022 is going to be because according to Eastern, um, you know, astrology, 2022 will be the year when Saturn will shift to Aquarian. And that is the time when liberation will happen. You know, when the true freedom each individual will be able to experience. Remaining connecting, you know, see, we, we are feeling so liberated when we are talking, even if we feel so connected. You know, when I have talked to you, is that a kind of liberation, but still the connect. I don't have the need to call you all the time. You know, we don't have the need to be connected all the time. Uh, you know, wanting to know what are you doing? Are you okay? Are you doing right? Are you safe? We didn't have to do that because we always knew that, you know, that is the person, the other person is capable. You know, you're sitting on your singhasan. You're sitting on your that chair. You are the king and I'm also a king. That beautiful understanding and realization I think we are moving towards that by 2022. And uh, I'm looking Beautiful. forward to that. And I know that we will be. Me too, me too. Everybody who's watching, you must be really psyched up. Give us a thumbs up if you are loving this conversation between two buddies of back in the day. If you've joined in, in you're joining into the next normal in collaboration with America Meditating Radio. And we are ringing in the new year with you all the way from Mother Bharat, India, with filmmaker and actress Kanu Priya and myself. And we've been talking about the balance of the feminine and the masculine. We've been talking about the pandemic. We're talking about, you know, how many things we're actually learning as a result of all of this that's going on. And we're talking about spirituality. One of the things that I love is the fact that Kanu Priya really said, this is the time to make a connection between the soul and God, because there is something inside for me, kind of prayer, I've been doing some serious reviewing and it's not intentional. I'm sitting in yoga, in connection to Baba, to God, to the Supreme, to Allah, to Jehovah, again, whatever's the language. And in my sitting with the self and the divine, it's like, it's like me remembering you. Like whatever is your energy, I'm going to pick that up and then we're going to have like a soul to soul communication with each other, even though we're not speaking in words. So when I'm sitting in yoga and in connection to Baba, it's like I'm going to Baba to remember the, 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 the strength and the power and the fullness that was bestowed upon me in my beginning, right? And I feel like there's, there are things that have gotten in the way of allowing that to happen. There are attachments to old stories. There are karmic debts that I'm still attached to. There are expectations which are coming from the past that I'm still attached to. There are desires that are delusional. 
because you're looking at social media, you're looking at television, you're hearing people, and you're thinking that you want what other people have. I mean, all of those emotions get mixed in the, in the minds of people. And what I'm feeling when I sit in yoga with the divine is my whole story, Kanupriya, is coming up. And I have to tell you that it's been a profound experience. Have you been feeling a, a deep sense of a life review taking place with you? Oh my God, a lot. <laughs> I learned to put my boundaries. You know, I had this problem from the beginning that I didn't know where to stop, you know. And uh, see, it'll just flow. My empathy was like, I'll get into anything. And then it was very difficult for me to come back. My energy was just getting, uh, you know, wasted actually. So in this pandemic, I realized that how to put the boundaries, you know, how to contain, because finally this body is a container. You know, I am containing that energy. I, I know my aura can grow. Need to help out has moved away from me and need to contain and wait because everyone, gentlemen, what I realized in this these 10 months is that everyone is on a journey. It is not my responsibility to just interfere in people's life and tell them that, oh, this can be done right. You know, because they have to do it that way, the way I had to do it my way. So this is something which was a big opening, eye-opening, a big awakening for me. And containing my, uh, you know, putting my boundaries out, containing myself helped me to find my, you know, higher uh, connect. Rather than connecting, you know, I've written a very, uh, it just came to me and it is there, I think it must have come from somewhere only, that uh, it is always between, it has always been between you and God. It was never between you and them, you know. And problem is that we always thought that it was it is between us and them, but it was never, you know. The whatever I'm receiving, because reception receiving is hap will happen from him. I was expecting that I'm going to receive from this A B C, or I'll give it to A B C. Neither I can give nor I can receive. You know, I can receive from him, I can give through him to anyone. This is something I understood. You know, this was a big eye-opening for myself. That, you know, you feel Beautiful. that, oh, I got this information, I got this understanding. Oh my God, this is something which should be shared. But I realized that it is, it. I have to share it with him. Through him, it will go out to others. You know, and if I have to take something, Perfect. I have to take it from him. And then from Perfect. me, it will automatically spread. And it can be him or yes. her for others also, you know. Yeah, Jayanti, when Jayanti when shared with me, you know, when I say that I was a toddler in spirituality, I was just opening up to, you know, different modalities, understanding. And she said one thing um, uh, in, in one of our interviews that he is he to you but he is she to me you know for her the divine the god was a her a she and that was a time i realized that yes you know uh, earlier it used to you, we used to hear that that you can have any kind of relationship with god he can be your child he can be whatever is la lacking in your life you can take him that way but uh, you know like so when she made me realize that was the time I understood how it happens. So in the coming year, we are all going to search for the relationship to develop and keeping my boundary about myself. I contain my energy. See, it will spread on its own. My aura, my, uh, you know, my emotional aura, my uh, mental aura, whatever you say, will continue to spread as I go higher and higher. That's what you sure. said. Um, everyone, I hope you heard that point, that the more you raise your vibrations, your aura within you, your light within you, will just automatically keep spreading. 
And I think if we keep chasing after the shadows or chasing after the illusions, it's like we're dimming our light, we're self-sabotaging ourselves. I think what kind of Priya has left us with is something really, really profound. And it will require you to have a lot of self-trust, a lot of humility, a lot of purity, a lot of faith. But it is going to happen. You know, till today, kind of Priya, I still marvel at how the deities walked around in India and thousands of years later, there are temples built in their honor. To this day, I marvel at the narrative of Jesus, of Abraham, of Buddha, who had a small amount of people around them, but thousands of years later, their aura transcended time and, and spanned through the, the ages that people till today are turning to them for a message. So what you have just said is absolutely nothing small, I have to tell you. And I think on that note, I would like to invite us to transcend our aura and go into a meditation. I did this meditation kind of Priya on what if, and it's connected to what you're sharing about, you know, breaking down all these boundaries and letting go of your titles, your your religion, your role, you know, all the things that you've done. So what I'd love to do is to invite us to do a beautiful meditation as we ring in the new year together and really look at letting go of all of these labels and titles and the attachments to them. And when we come back, we will toast in the new year together and we will do closing <laughs> remarks and I will give you a massive virtual hug and a big thank you for making my my ringing in of the new year so absolutely special. So you ready? Let's take a deep breath and let's go into a beautiful meditation yes. together. Om Shanti. As I sit here in quiet reflection, I'm reminded how my thoughts create my reality. I've accepted that I am what I am because of what I think. So what if for this moment I choose to let go of my various attachments to physical forms that have limited my potential and my capacity? What if I chose to be free from limitations of thinking? So just for a little while, I invite you to take a deep breath. Inhale and exhale. And imagine for a moment, what if I no longer had an attachment to my name? How would that feel? What if I let go of the awareness of the gender? What if I let go of the roles that I play, the titles that I own? What if I decided to release thinking of myself as religion, a language, a nationality. What if I choose to just let go of the name gender, role, title 
religion, language, nationality, and let go of the awareness of the body. How would I feel? Who would think of me in this awareness? And who would I think of? I would think of God. And God's remembrance would fall on me. And I, the living soul, would be completely free. Let me just sit in this moment for a little longer. And just be free. Now gently bring back the awareness of your gender, language, nationality, title, role, name, religion, whatever. Bring it back to your awareness and see if you can bring the experience of freedom and peace. as you go out into the world and play your various parts. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Okay, welcome back everyone. Did that get you into that groove and that space? Are you ready to ring in 2021 with the connection of the self, the soul, and the connection of the divine? I think Kanyapriya and I certainly are. Kanyapriya, you've got your, you got your glass. Shall we ring in the yes, new year together? I have. By the way, this is not vodka, everyone. Sure. This is water. <laughs> and I just want to wish everybody out there an extremely happy new year, a prosperous new year. May you really get to that point in your life that, you know, you really feel, oh, let me drink. Can you pray? Did you drink? Okay. (laughs) Sure. Cheers. Evian, the best. Anyway, (laughs) this is the way we've got to look at 2021 (laughs) as the year of... (laughs) Exactly. It's the year of ultimate celebration, everyone. We've got to take care of ourselves on the inside. This is what this year is going to do for us. And I think on behalf of all of us tonight, I want you to know this is your year. All you have to do is rise up to the call, find your balance, make your connection to the divine. Let your aura be so loud that it lights up someone else's, especially if they're in a dark place. Kind of prayer. I can't thank you enough for making this such a special New Year's for me, but please, any other closing remarks that you'd like to share with our incredible group of people, please do, and any other, anything that's on your heart or in your mind, please share now. One is that I love you so much. There is There are no words, because you've really lit my New Year for, my, for me also. And uh, before I say bye to such beautiful audience out there, you're a family and, uh, you know, this is the time to create the new families, the energetic families. And this is the year which is going to be the real happy New Year. We've cried, we've been really, really in the past year and we've collectively together suffered but this is the time for salvation this is the time for celebration actually which we will realize and which we will honor 
so uh thank you so much sister jena and the whole team out there and the way i said it's a family i look forward to connecting with you more uh on, through these mediums and otherwise also thank you so much happy new year here to you too and give my love to the entire family there too and everyone out there a very very prosperous safe profoundly powerful spiritual awakening new year for you happy 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 new year to each and every one of you from the depths of our hearts and it's my pure wish that you really value your greatest resource your thoughts your feelings your emotions may you really walk in the company of the divine at every waking moment and may you never believe anything is impossible for you to achieve once you have the will the inspiration the courage and the purity of intent nothing can stop you keep moving forward let this be your year of moving forward and getting prepared for a golden age of future and existence thanks so much to everyone out there hopefully you've liked today's show tremendously give me your thumbs up give me all of your emojis please feel free to keep in touch with kind of prayer her information is on the system and let her know that you really enjoyed the conversation here and know that you're loved you're loved you're respected you're valued and more than anything else you're worth every moment you're worth every moment thanks for joining us on the next normal i'll see you again in the new year take care all the very best